So this plane has two floors. It's a double decker. So they literally have two jetways. You go to it. This is definitely the biggest plane I've ever been on. I'm not hiking Everest, but I'm hiking like a thousand stairs just to get up to this temple. I'm only like halfway. The hike continues. Hey, Nate. We just climbed up here. Get some views. Oh, hey. Hey, yo. Rocking out here to some tunes. Yeah. As we drive to the airport to get on the little flight. Oh, puppy in the road. Puppy in the road. We're headed to the airport to get on the little plane. It's gonna take us up to Luke Rock. And it's about six in the morning here. The streets are relatively not crowded, which is kind of nice. It's kind of true camp and day. He had to get a long running start. Playing a little local soccer here in this cool little village. We're spending the night. They grow all their food up here. There's always little green greenhouses all over. Nice! <laughs> this is Nate and I rocking out in the reggae bar. Bob Marley here, some kid praying on the floor. Look at the size of this table. It's like twice the size of a normal pool table. We wish we had the jazz game going, but uh, all right, we're here on day two of hiking. A nice big tall bridge. Some pack mules just crossed ahead of us. Nate's getting ready for the pose of a lifetime. We just climbed a really steep part. Look at these guys with their gear on their back. I can't see the river. It's down there though. There's a lower bridge. And there's our upper bridge, and we ascend. We're at the National Park, I don't know what it's called. Somche something. It's here at Namche Bazaar. Oh, here at Namche Bazaar. It's a World Heritage Site. There's too many clouds. And it's supposedly really pretty. So, <laughs> we're just trying to figure out how much... It's, it's not too bad, but it's a little cold. What are cold. you doing? I'm making like video. Cool. I want to show Steph. We woke up this morning and it was all rainy and foggy. And we came out the front door. Good morning. And check this out. We had no idea because it was raining and all foggy. This little town is at the base of all of this. So we just did a short walk up the hill. We're all taking pictures of our first view of Everest. So it's not that mountain, but that one right behind. It's our first view of Everest. Now look at where we are. Here at Namche Bazaar. We're just surrounded by these white peaks. That's the canyon we just hiked up. It's just deep in the middle of the Himalayas. We're getting some instruction from our Sherpa. And that's a statue right there of the 
Sherpa that summited for the first time with Edmund Hillary. We're walking across the Terrace Trail, one of the most beautiful panoramas there is. Mountains so high, valley so deep you can't even see the bottom. Pretty uh, they books uh, in the Insane top of the building. They use the uh, they Yeti scalp the of the not to raise not donations for the monastery. They, are all the we call, they uh, found to the, they call it a big the giant monkey, monkey and they come to the 80 years ago. Day. And this is what they uh, have left out of the proof that they uh, found. Salary. That's why uh, you say uh, we take the money for that, not for the night the business. We're here acclimating at Namche Bazaar. Just finished visiting a monastery and some great views. Now the clouds have rolled in. Otherwise there's normally towering white peaks around us. About one o'clock, so in the mornings it's clear. By one o'clock or so it gets cloudy and by evening it rains. And the locals say that's pretty much how it goes all the time here. And now we're just heading down toward that school. It's recess time. and we'll drop in the village and hang out as we enjoy our acclimating day. Even though we have already hiked six miles, apparently, we will by the time we're done with this descent on our acclimating day. Here on a little rest break, a little yak train going by. That green mountain is where we stayed last night. We just trekked up to here. This is a popular rest break, as you can tell. And that is a new canyon we haven't seen yet. It looks like something like straight off of Lord of the Rings. We're headed up to that saddle. What in the heck do we have here? Just think you can lay down anywhere? Kind of. Well, I guess I do the same thing. Take a little break on the trail when I need to. Want to try on the pack? I think our porter's a little suspicious of him being able to. Jet's our most fit guy here. <laughs> Get that headband on, Jet! Don't snap your neck. <laughs> oh, that's like bubbles. <laughs> How is it? How would it be for 8.2 miles uphill? It'd be hard. <laughs> so we've all, always wondered what these yaks eat to give them so much energy to climb up the mountain. The and now we know. It's everything we don't eat. All our leftover food. A new he must conquer and destroy. To feed these big guys. These are the guys that literally do all the hard work. Morning. Uh, I believe it's Saturday morning. And we're all just about to get back on the trail and head up. If you can tell, kind of up in those clouds. There's Everest. Not this one, but that one is Everest. Under a pale blue sky. Well, the trek continues. That's where we're headed. And we're just surrounded, of course, as always. Peaks is where it came from. But this video is a little special because at any point here in the next five, ten minutes, I will hit the highest I've ever been. The highest I've been previous to this trek was King's Peak, which is about 13,500. And somewhere in this little jaunt on this hillside, 
I'm going to hit 13,600. And tonight we'll be sleeping above 14,000. It'll be great. We just passed the elevation of King's Peak, highest point in Utah. Looks like we're in the desert. It's actually really chilly. 39 and Clay is loving it. Highest he's ever been. So no matter where we go, you can always count on Nate to stir up a conversation with any other truckers. These two guys are from England. And Nate's just chatting away while we decide what we want. Rice, noodles, or potatoes. It's pretty much on every menu. But this chef has got pizza on his menu, so I'm voting for pizza. Yeah, every time I'd be. Yeah, I'll make it down at half the time. I'm gonna catch it! So we just finished the movie Everest, and literally everything in that movie is like identical to what we've just experienced, and there's something about watching the movie Everest, seeing all of that, and then walking out of the hotel to this, literally, we just watched, of course we can't see the mountain, because it's the uh, Every evening the clouds come in, as the movie shown. Uh, quite an experience. Sunday morning and we have uh, started our way up to some really high elevation as you can see we're not alone there's lots of trekkers all making their way but look at this this is why you pay the big bucks it's not about the destination it's about the journey and it's this type of trek right now, this moment, where you soak in the journey and just be present. I think we're headed up to that pass. Stop. Gain some elevation. If you can even hear me, it's windy. Those little Karen markers you see on that ridge are the monuments for the uh, lost climbers that their bodies are still on Everest or any of these mountains for that matter, and they haven't been able to recover. So we are just hanging out, taking a little breather, because we just made a really hard climb. this beanie because I lost my other beanie and just in the nick of time it's snowing. It's, it just started snowing while I was in the shop where are we at right now guys world's highest world's highest world's highest the world's highest
world's highest bakery. We just devour chocolate cake and probably the best piece of apple pie. And please tune into the song right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna I don't think a bakery could be any better. Uh, it's really good. <laughs> here comes Rosie and Jed through the crowd. All the trails kind of converge here. It's kind of a little viewpoint here of this huge Kumba glacier that's unlike any glacier I've ever seen before. And if you look way up at the top of the glacier, there's a little tent city right there, and that's where we're headed. Today that is base camp. Well, we see higher than base camp right now. I know, I think we are a little higher than base camp. We just got up to 17,000 feet on this little jaunt, which, to put in perspective, is <coughs> Timp is 11,000 something. Highest peak in Utah is 13 and a half ish. Oh, it's not spring lane. Oh. Anyway, this is our last, this is the highest structure you know, in the world. This is where we're going to be staying tonight. We're going to actually pass a few of these here today. You can see all the helicopters moving gear and the climbers. And the very tip right there, you see that smoky looking cloud. It's Everest. It looks like the helicopter's about to take off. We're here at Gorb Shep, not too far from base camp. The helicopter behind me just is picking up an injured person. Somebody looks like broke their leg or something. We've got big camp just over there by that glacier. And uh, I think it was just a trucker though, it looked like a woman. But if you look right behind me, just about there is uh, Everest, kind of uh, right where you see that smoke behind me. So there's the rest of the gang up ahead. Because Nate and I were taking pictures. Base Sing it, Pima, sing it. Who needs tunes when you have Pima? Doing some laundry. We are moseying through base camp. All the other people stop there at the monument. But because our, ex our group has Dan and he's got teams going up to Summit, we're going to go find his tent. Take two. Just fell on my butt. All this, all this rock is on top of the glacier. So when the rock gets pushed aside, it exposes some ice. Anyway. We're headed through downtown base camp. Ouch, my hand and my butt really hurts. This is Dan's camp right here. And that's the famous ice mill that they put all the ladders and everything over the crevasses and it changes all the time. They go up between there, Everest now covered in clouds, but it's right in between these two mountains. Ducking out of base camp, spent about an hour and a half there. Right on cue, here it was nice and sunny this morning. Two o'clock. 
got snow coming in. You can see base camp behind me. And the snow is gonna start getting us real good here in a second. It's 4 a.m. We're on the mountainside of Kalapatar. Somebody had the bright idea to see the sunrise over sunrest. And it's freezing. Alright, Jed, where are we? Kalapatar. 4.30 in the morning. 17 There's a planet poking through up next to Everest. So Everest is that you peak. Nice bright star planet over there. You can see it on the camera. You can see it on the camera too. Down, she's very breaking. Space, space, open air. Get a move on him, baby. We're saying our final goodbyes to base camp in the valley. sleeping tonight. So we've got a long way to go. But we keep hitting trail traffic. A lot of traffic right now. We got yaks on the map, which doesn't like us. We're stuck here. A little bit. So we're hiking down in a blizzard. And today, on our original schedule, would have been the day we would have arrived at base camp. Thank goodness we made an audible. Moved it up a day because it was a nice day yesterday. And today we can't see anything because it's all cloudy. So, good call. The snow let up, or at least we dropped into this little valley. And we can look back to where we just came from. And it is spectacular. In one day, we were at 18,000 feet, and now we've already dropped down to like 15,000 feet. And that little village down there is where we're headed to finally sleep after hiking a million miles today. Without uh, getting hurt. <laughs> oh boy. 
fall or drop my phone off this thing. But all these scarves and and uh, prayer flags are tied to the bridge for good luck, as we've seen throughout the whole thing. These are the same prayer scarves that we received at our little going away ceremony in Namche, which was really fun. And this is Dawa, he's our pack leader. He's our Sherpa leader, he always leads the way. Next year he is going to join the expedition to actually go and work with the team going up Everest. It's famous. So we just cut up to my porter. My bag is so small it's down in the basket. But he's got one, two, three bags on top of that. I think a fourth bag of wheat or something under that rain fly. But this guy has been our porter the whole trip. Doesn't speak any English. But he is probably the oldest porter. But he carries by far the biggest load. <laughs> so impressive. He just doesn't stop. He probably only weighs 145 pounds at the most. He's a little guy. Mountain graffiti. It's scriptures. And the reason why we're not taking that path but going around this rock is because they believe you always have to go on the right side. Well, I should say the left side so that the rock is on the right side of you. It's a really steep hill. I'm gonna pass out. So Nate has lost some weight this trip. So now he's getting a, a belt fixed onto his pants. Pretty sure they're using a, <laughs> a rope or something. He's got all sorts of uh, assistance. He's been losing his pants the whole hike. Maldives is our man. We had to check in here. Now we're checking out. So we just wrapped we it up. Did it. We did it. Oh, we gotta go say some thank you prayers. <laughs> I do one more in here. taking a shower and they are literally burning bodies on these platforms. You die, you do a ceremony, get put on these platforms, the bodies burn, and they push your ashes into the river. The wife, maybe the mother, just came down and got some water from the river. 
put it on the body's face. The feet are in the water. Quite the journey. Thanks for tagging along. Join me next time on the next big adventure.